see how do you think I know she got a 12 inch bow and a cold steel 44 Here comes that guy Susan Lord how do you think I know I'm going down to the station when her train is due Cause my black eyed Susie Lord, she coming on through Down to the station, Lord, when her train is due With Nancy and Lisa, you just heard Black Eyed Susie from A Satchel Full of Blues. It's the latest and ninth album by a San Francisco Bay Area Roots music man, Blind Lemon Pledge. We call him James Byfield. James is back on the show. He comes on every year, well, sometimes twice a year. He's been busy uh, with his new albums. And you can keep up with him at blindlemon-pledge.com. But welcome back, James. How are you doing? I'm doing real well. Good to talk to you guys again after this uh, tumultuous year. I know. Mm -hmm. It's still, listen, it's not, the tumultuous is not going away. I think we (laughs) need more blues. And I think this album has a lighter feel and it gets dark. There's some dark stuff in there. Uh, You know, there's, there's some darker songs, but I feel like it's kind of like, it's a, it's an album of release, like a blues release. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think the blues, I mean, that's why I like the blues. Even the dark stuff's got relief to it. You know, I mean, it's you get your emotions in there and uh, and get it out of yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would, the blues will never die, right? I think that's one of those uh, genres that just kind of well, we can never let it, you know, go. Well, it's also so built into so much of American music that you know, there's no way it's going to die. It just goes mm-hmm. through changes. So. We, we've been you put up all the songs on YouTube and everyone it's under James Byfield when you go there B Y F I E L D Byfield so that means you have a field in your family right Byfield the last name yeah I th- they supposedly it meant my my family back in England lived by a field so seriously <laughs> oh oh how cool that's it yeah, that's, 
That's a great way to get a name. We're going to put you on a show with Glenn from Norfolk in England. Yeah. He checks out everyone's DNA and does like their history in England. We'll have to check it out because a lot of those airfields or mm -hmm. fields turned out to be airfields for World War II and stuff. So you never know. You know. Yeah, you never know. Well, I, one time I t took a trip to Jamaica, or I, I went there several times, but the first time I went, there's a Byfield Highway there that we actually oh. rolled down. So that was kind of cool. That oh, is cool. Ah, well, this ah, is, a, okay, so what we learned today, because everyone, we try to do this through Zoom and video and, and things weren't working, but we did get to have a sneak peek into your home. So I'm going to just tell people this, like <laughs> James has a lot of plants. We didn't see those plants, but we saw a lot of plants, but <laughs> indoor house plants, regular, good, clean house, uh, house plants, and then some masks. So you collect masks, which is something we didn't know about. Um, tell me what started this, because I feel like that's part of this. It's an ancient thing in cultures i mean around the world it, what what got you started in that somehow and it, it, we've been collecting for a long time my wife and i both are into the collection and uh, i don't remember what our first mask we got was or how how it started but we just kept being drawn to masks and uh, finding these great ones both on our travels and in flea markets and stuff and we we kind of set our own uh our own criteria for it, that it, that it just had to speak to us, you know, it, 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 and so we looked for a certain kind of feel and stuff. And we've ended up with uh, masks from around the world, both, as I say, from places we visited. And then in flea markets, you often find an African mask or a, a Thai mask or something. A China, I found a Chinese mask one time of this pig that was just great. So Wow. Whenever we see one we like, we get them, although we now have a, a couple hundred. <laughs> oh, wow. 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 Did you find wow. any in Jamaica? Pardon? When you went to Jamaica, did you find any? Any masks over there? Yeah, you know, I, I think when we were in Jamaica was kind of before we were really getting into masks. But mm. after after we got into it, we still visited the Caribbean and I found them in other places. So, mm. um, although that's not a huge part, well, we, it is for carnival and stuff. In fact, we, we, uh, we got one of the mesh masks that they, that they wear in, uh, on Barbados. These, it's a made mm. out of steel mesh and then painted over. And, and we got that wow. after carnival. So. I want to do a whole thing on masks. Now. Well, I know artist Victoria it's, it's Chick did a story. I'll have to send it to you. Artist mm -hmm. Victoria Chick, uh, she, she comes on and does art history, and she did a whole story. And I think it's in one of our uh, digital magazines. I don't know if it's up on the website anymore, but it was one of – she did it about Halloween and why we get in, dressed up for Halloween and everything. Mm -hmm. And masks had to do some – you know, with, like you want to be something, but you're hidden and – there's a lot of just there's so much to it about cultural culture and then really not being one not wanting to be seen but needing to be seen you know what i mean there's this, yeah oh yeah yeah well again yeah. and and i i like the whole idea and that's partly what i've done with my music is is uh is yeah, stepping Byfield into another and, identity you know yeah byfield and then blind lemon pledge yeah 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 it's yeah because i when i when i concede the character that was kind of the idea I, I i knew i wanted to start recording blues but i thought of kind of creating a character that i could inhabit to to do the music so that's where blind lemon pledge came from who is that masked man <laughs> <laughs> so so i listen this album it's awesome we love it oh, and thank um, you. where can people get it like i know everyone can go to your website again blind lemon it's, it's on amazon and itunes and all the all the major outlets Are you on spotify? spotify yeah oh yeah. good good we started making playlists on spotify now so oh good. cool yeah, yeah. So we can start adding because we got to do ham and eggs. And, you know, you know, we, we love to play ham and eggs. Mm -hmm. So good thing. And a lot of your music, Nancy and I are in the Appalachian mm -hmm. country now. So it's it's time to play your music everywhere we travel because it goes with where we're, we're at. And um, I think that's so cool about what your music is. But this album, um, I know the last one going home, you had a few covers. This one, you only have one cover on there, Alberta. And I love that version. I love what you did with Alberta. Um, oh, thanks so much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, I've actually known that song since I was about 14 or 15 
way back in the day, there was a uh, a group called the Chad Mitchell Trio that did the song, and uh, and I learned it from that. And then years later, I added it to my repertoire, and for some reason, I started playing it this that way, it was slow, and I kind of worked out an arrangement. And one day, I said, said, you know, I should go back and listen to what mm-hmm. Chad Mitchell did just to see how much I veered from the original I completely veered <laughs> it, was, it was interesting because they do it as kind of a shuffle blues and I I had my mind said a completely different thing so that's wow wild. was this this yeah. album kind of reminds me of um almost like hand heat but like the slow like this there's a lilt in it that just kind mm-hmm. of like mm-hmm. I don't you know when someone's in in between a situation or um it's like that you're catching like catching a song and an and emotion in the in-between zone like you're really upset or not you know but you're in that zone of coming out of it but you still want to linger it's ling- lingering blues am i allowed like lingering blues. i like that i like yeah. that uh, that's a good song title because it's yeah about, i was just gonna say that's a great song title yeah right there. because it's like the anger and how long are you gonna harbor the anger yeah, you yeah. have that feeling because, because you've got this, you're going, and then yeah. you're like, well, mm-hmm. you know, I may yeah, do I feel really? right. yeah. yeah, you've got that. And I don't know if that's a San Francisco thing. I was thinking about that today. I was like, because you're oh, really I'm good at this vibe of like the Appalachian areas and like, you know, Virginia and everything. And then I was like, you know, this one for me felt a little bit more San Francisco. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But I mean, what does that mean? You know, that's just me. Everybody's got their yeah. own thing. I, to me, I don't want to. Like it, I, I, because I, it's like it's got San Francisco is like ups and downs and trolleys. I, and I up told the hill, Nancy, down I the told, hill. Yeah, I was like, it's, Nancy, this um, is your album because I love is, San Francisco. But this is your this is her vibe of that that kind mm. of just up and down and deal with it. You know? Uh, because, yeah. Well. I de- definitely, uh, yeah. I definitely set up the flow of it that way, so that there's a, yeah. a kind of a hot one and then a, a much more tame yeah. one, so you keep kind of rolling and rolling and rolling. Yeah, so. oh. and it's like it's up to you to deal with it, and like the city itself, and you either embrace it or or you don't. Mm-hmm. And if you don't, you better leave because mm-hmm. you won't be <laughs> happy. Because, but I mean, it's it's a city is its own thing compared to going out into the wilderness, which also has its ups and downs. You know, yeah. it, it really does, depending on what you run into. So mm-hmm. it's really up to people to deal with their own emotions and take on it. But mm-hmm. as San Francisco's a hoot, man. <laughs> I, but I think about also like the album where I say it kind of feels like San Francisco to me, like it just mm-hmm. kind of, has that vibe of the blues of when you know yeah. like here's Woodstock and then everybody going to San, the Bay Area because yeah. of this hotbed right mm-hmm. it has that feel of that time frame of that let things go mm-hmm. but at the same time really stand up for like any like it, a satchel full of blues is like that to me that I love the title of it because it's yeah, like, me too. It's, it's like a collection, I'm like your mask it. collection, right? So I'm glad we saw the mask. Well, a tiny, teeny portion of the mask collection, but <laughs> um, it, it, it's kind of that where a satchel full of blues is like, you know, it's you're, it's, you're carrying this luggage, right? And that's what yeah. San Francisco was like. People didn't, they mm. brought all these sounds to the Bay Area and here no, was this true, amalgamation. Yeah. And mm. that's what this album I, I can't get away from that. That's just, that's for me personally. Like everyone's got their own opinion for and feel to what they listen to. Um, but for me, it just kind of had this like, oh, this is what happened. And you're in the Bay Area and you wrote it during a pandemic. So I'm thinking, hmm, did your city have some influence on this? Well, I, I've lived here so long, I can't help but have yeah. influence all the time, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've been here since I was 17, so. Mm. It's it's a big part of me. Do you do you ever see those Conyers, those parents that somebody let loose? We interviewed him years ago, and the, I'm like, sorry, the, 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 the what? The, the Conyers, the, con- the birds. Con- oh little... God, yes, they're they're wonderful. Yeah. They've oh, spread, cool. in fact. Yeah, they're, they're in other other sections of the city. Oh yeah, yeah. we went up. That I was... can't remember the gentleman's name, but his 
now wife yeah. filmed him, did a documentary yeah. on Netflix, and we're like, we're going to San Francisco. We need to go interview him. And we did. And we, we did. Went up, oh, cool. tower, up to the Coit Tower. Yeah. yeah, he was he was a home at that point homeless. He was homeless, and yeah. Feeding, feeding the the birds, and well, the, I mean that's got a lot to do with the blues. But the birds had the blues, but he fed them, and they take care of him, and um, it's pretty cool. I mean, that's something yeah. that I think San Francisco is exactly what Nancy bringing that up is like. Mm. Here's everybody coming in, animals, yeah. birds. You're a port. You're a harbor. Like yeah. you know, a bay, mm. and so. Here's this amalgamation, uh, and that again, your album had that, and I think that's what a satchel is. If you've lived a good life, you're going to have a satchel full of difference. Don't yeah, be because when thing. you when you unpack the satchel and you get to the bottom, you're going to like, oh, I didn't know I brought this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What was under there? Okay, so that mm-hmm. brings up the dark song. Okay. <laughs> the dark song. <laughs> the dark. The, the I dark killed the king song. of the blues. Like seriously, yeah, like dude. okay. So <laughs> when I want to know, like when you're putting the album together, were you thinking of the album and getting concepty with it, or were you just like these songs were just coming out, or like? Well, because- the, the this album, as as a, many of mine are, of where I do original songs, I both write uh, kind of in the time that I'm putting the album together, or just before, and I also bring. Uh, use songs that I've either never recorded or sometimes re-record. And um, this one I've, in fact, uh, this is the third time I've tried on this one. And uh, and what I like about re-recording, I mean, I kind of got that from uh, from Muddy Waters because Muddy Waters used mm. to re-record the same songs mm. several times at different times in his life. And you kind of get, oh, well, now you're, you know, 10 years mm. later, what's your interpretation or how do you feel about the song now yeah and so I, I had never been really happy with the the recordings i'd gotten on it and so i decided to to bring it into this album but what i did was i i uh, cut the i shortened the uh, bridge considerably and i completely changed the kind of feel of it i it hadn't been a slide song before so i got my slide mm-hmm. out and that changed the way the the beat and suddenly the whole thing kind of fell together in a brand new way. And I, I love that kind of thing. I like to see songs like change and live and go through, you know, grow up and do different um, things. Yeah. Oh. I think that's cool because then it appeals to different generations and you never know how long or how far that's going to go well, yeah, you know, yeah. into, into the future and how people are going to listen to it and respond to it. I think it's cool. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. If, Be- if Beale Street was a woman, I recognize that one. Oh, yeah. That was off my jazz album. Yeah. Um, again, another one. Well, and as you recall, uh, my friend Marisa sang it on the jazz album. Mm. I thought, you know, it's. Uh, I thought the, the interesting thing about the way records are promoted, as I probably know, the jazz one went to more of a specific jazz audience. Mm, so, yeah. so the acoustic blues audience hadn't ever really heard that song. <clears throat> so uh. I said, well, you know, it's worth, uh, worth playing, you know, worth putting it on the album for that. And so uh, what I did was I went back to the original uh, arrangement I had for it, which was very dark and bluesy. And, uh, and cause we had rearranged it for the jazz album. So uh, we turned it into kind of a, almost uh, New Orleans kind of thing on the jazz album, but then I took it back to its more rootsy sound for this. Wow, I love that. That's love like it. just cooking with a different spice. Yeah. You, you know, know, it's the same dish, but you're cooking it with a different spice. Well, I love you, it. You make me feel better too about some of my songwriting is just like, I have this one song that was recorded um, away from what the original was, mm-hmm. but how I wrote it because we had like one take. <laughs> and yeah. Everybody had to be able to like hear three chord blues. Like let's just turn it into that. And I've been doing a lot with uh, the drummer I played with was uh, Willie, Willie Kellogg from, he played with Mm -hmm. Moby Grape and Flying Burrito Brothers at the time. And uh, no, kind of retired from that. He was like in between with them. And, Mm -hmm. and um, he was like, no, you got to do this and that. And we used to play uh, Murder My Heart for the Judge. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Murder, my I got uh, the judge. Yeah. The judge. Oh yeah, don't uh. even, you wouldn't budge. 
I got murder. And uh, he was like, he's like, you got to calm down on that song. I'm like, no, I can't. He's like, you got to Never chill. calm down. I can't. He was like, you got to bring it back. That's not how Moby Grape did it. I'm like, well, this is mine. I'm pissed. <laughs> I don't know why. It wasn't me. But um, anyway, so Prozac Jane is a song I wrote and it kind of it turned into like not that, but because we were and whenever we did gigs, it was like the quickest way to get people to do this song. But the song is so not that. It's like two op like one song is complete opposites. Like mm, complete opposites. Like one is more prog rock actually, and one is like complete blues. And both I like both. But to do the other side, it's like it's I need help, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so but but I feel like it's very interesting about songs how you can change them in that yeah. way, but still have the same feel. You know, you still have that. Um, there's the same well, message. It's kinda, yeah, it's kind of what I do with covers too. You know, I try to. I don't do any cover that I can't find my own self in. You know, if I mm. if I end up just sounding like somebody I've already heard before, I just point. I just uh, you know it's not it's not interesting to me. It's like, yeah, it's like I I like to do I like to take mm. a song like like the last album, which was mostly covers. And you know, find find where my own particular voice and style and everything fits into it. So mm. that's that's really important to me. Would, yeah, yeah would you listen, do you listen to other people doing the covers? I just have to ask because you know it's, it's interesting when. You oh yeah, them. yeah. If I'm a, if yeah. I'm adding a new song to the repertoire, I'll go and uh, and I'll listen. You know, if, if it's some if it's by some famous original guy like like say J, I've added a couple J J Kale songs to my repertoire oh, over I love years, JJ, man. and uh, so I always go and listen to his his version of it, mm -hmm. and then kind of take off from there. You know, go where I want to go. But would you it. listen to like Clapton? I, like if Clapton, you know, because he basically mm -hmm. took J J Kale's <laughs> repertoire. Sorry, no, but anyway, it. but now me, you know, like as, <laughs> I just did that for Nancy. But um, JJ, no. Kale, like JJ Kale, to me is one of the most the, the best writers out there, right? And and just oh yeah, some, I love it. I, I mean, damn, he's, he's so that, sparse. Yeah, right. He's yeah. got this rhythm. He's like the driving rhythm. Um, but then you know, here comes Clapton, takes his tunes, not in a bad way, but now like it's just two different <laughs> songs. Now, would you listen to Clapton's version before you recorded it and and covered it? I probably would, you know, just as kind of research. Um, okay. But uh, I'm sure, I'm sure, knowing me, I would like the JJ Kale version better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you and Nancy are on the same tribe then. <laughs> I can't do it. So I'm not going to say anything. No, but JJ Kale, had, you know what JJ Kale had, and you do this too in your music, is you allow this breathability and space to actually oh, that's, that's, lean in. That's so true of my music. I mean, I'm very mm. conscious of it because uh, I I just love that. I love to have air around and mm -hmm. keep think, you know, have let the let the listener fill in rather than fill with a million notes, you know. But and and that is what I love is because then people feel one with you as you're playing. When it gets too complicated, it's like. Uh, when um, I mean, I love classical music, but there are composers that are so complicated that you're like, what the hell are you doing? And <laughs> you can't, no, you just can't get there with, you can't even sort out the melody. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And it, and it's not that they're um, bad musicians. It's just, that's not your cup of tea. Let me put it that way. So it, you have to hit the, the, the genre has to keep up with the times, but not go too far ahead that nobody knows what you're doing. It's it's a pro. It, it's it's like a simple. I always think about it as animals migrating. They have their certain path. Sometimes they have to go off the path because of hunters and stuff like that, and then they go back. But they get there somehow. Yeah. They migrate every year. And it's like that. It can't be too fast and it can't be too slow. And it, but it has to appeal, uh, appeal to the rest of the herd. Like the leader can't be, hey, I can run faster than the rest of you. And they're all like, well, go ahead. Bye bye. Pick a new leader. It's like that to me. I don't know if that made any sense at all. But 
<laughs> well, it, well, it, uh, it's okay. There's tech. Oh, let me try and put it another way. There's technical playing to show off your technique, and there's playing and uh, with emotion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh no, I to I totally agree. Yeah. Many years ago, when I was when I was a budding guitarist, I practice and practice so I could what they call mm -hmm. shredding. You know, play a yeah, million yeah, notes yeah. at a million miles a minute. Yeah. And I got I got decent at it, although you had to practice a lot to get there. And one day I was playing in a jam session. I just went like, "What am I doing? I'm just moving my fingers." You know, I'm not. Yeah. Uh, I didn't exactly. really have a melody or anything. And exactly. and, I, and that and I and I changed from that day on. I went, yeah. "Okay, I'll go the other way. I'll I'll just keep it sparse and." You know, is is lots of space and lots of air. So this well, album, yeah. you yeah. need the, you need the depth of of emotion and feeling to connect with the audience. But that I think that's I think that's a beauty about blues is it gets you to actually mm -hmm. feel every part of the note. Like as yeah. it ends, mm -hmm. you you turn with it. You know, mm -hmm. and you, you, you can listen to a song a gazillion times and it will be different every time according to your feelings to your emotion your mm -hmm. attitude at that time you know yeah, and yeah. and so i think the blues is just one of those genres that an americana i love it because you you incorporate a lot of you know what's going on in, on the outside of the blues like americana is like you got a little country you got a little bit of this and that but a country has blues in it too I don't oh yeah, know. It, yeah. It, you know, it's, well, it's I'm, there. I'm I'm probably one of the more eclectic people doing stuff out there, and and interestingly for this album, in the past, and you, if you kind of review like you love uh, ham and eggs and stuff like that, mm -hmm. in the past I used to kind of uh, do arrangements that were geared to the song. They were kind of like genre arrangements. So each mm -hmm. on some of my albums, like the Evangeline album, mm. every every song has a kind of different uh orchestration to it and mm -hmm. then for this one i decided you know based on my last album which just had me and a bass player i thought i'm going to cut it back so that the songs are what's eclectic and yeah. different but the but the but the band is basically the same just playing just doing a different approach to each song so mm -hmm. that's what that's what the sound of this one is. I, I really black eyed Susie to me I, I really love it because I'm just more I, I really love slide and like that just you know swampy mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. and and where it's just like yeah this is how it's like the hound dog is calling you know it's, <laughs> it's singing it, you know we're in Tennessee right now we're recording uh, by the mm -hmm. time this airs we'll be in North Carolina in, in, yeah. in, on the flat <laughs> river so I mean we're in this country right now you know and it's like it feels really good so can't wait and we're gonna mm -hmm. be listening to this as we travel uh yeah but, you know there's Road this trip. i mean this the blues is international you know i feel yeah. like you know we learned a lot about creole culture when we're in louisiana <clears throat> mm -hmm. and that it, creole culture is worldwide and i think yeah, that's the yeah. same with the blues it's it's worldwide oh, yeah. it's how you feel and how you emote it and you know it it's just it it's always there and you're doing this amazing work of like here's just these different ways of hearing it and here's these songs the the songs to me right now like i love the fact that you always have humor which is not always in well it's not true like buddy guy has probably got one of the most he they're all humorous right the guy like you know the buddy guy yeah, to me yeah. is one of my favorites in the blues world but um teacher teacher you know here it is cute you always add in a little humor and if and folks that are following james on facebook there's every satire and uh wit mm -hmm. and in your face that you want. <laughs> i love following you on facebook just because i'm like uh oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah i do, I do I get a little wiggy <laughs> i know no but every you know you you add some joy to you know you've got to be like you bring in the joy too it's not all oh good you yeah. know what I mean? You bring joy into every album you have has something lighthearted. Let me put it that way. Lighthearted. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I like I like and and they're the hardest songs to write. Humorous songs are very hard to mm -hmm. write because because uh, they, they they often aren't funny at all. You know, it's like you, you get to the end and go, eh. You know, oh God! Okay. Who wants to be a comedian? How hard no, but, is that? Oh God! Yeah. <laughs> right. But if you have the satire kind of personality, and then you try to be funny with it, I mean, it is. It's funnier. 
but not yeah. to everybody. But yeah, yeah. Uh, but I mean, that's what humans are. That's why we're human. Mm. We can look back and critique ourselves mm. and either you know go down in the dumps with it or or make fun of it. And I think we're as humans, what brings us forward is the ability to look and laugh at ourselves. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I have five or six teacher friends, and this is their favorite song. <laughs> yeah, really, teacher, teacher. That's awesome. Well, because, yeah, crushes happen, right? I wonder about mm-hmm. that. It's so interesting because it's it's about, um, it does prove that knowledge is power, right? Yeah. And, um, it does influence and affect. And I think when someone teaches you something, you feel something for that person that teaches you mm-hmm. something. If it oh, got yeah. through to you. And then as, you know, at those ages, it becomes a crush. But then how many college teachers end up with, you know, their students as a wife or a husband? So yeah, know, yeah. the true thing, you, know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you yeah. know, love has no age boundaries, apparently. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Except it, by law. <laughs> I know. I know. And that's There's really funny, that, too. Which is a good thing, too. <laughs> I know that today we're, we're, we're recording this. Um, on Roman Polanski's birthday, and I looked him up. I'm like, oh, I know no. this name. I know scandal Ew. happened, and don't put a quote out there about Roman Polanski through him. No, and I looked it up. Ew. I'm like, oh, that's why. That's why I don't want to. No, <laughs> bad boy. Yeah, yeah. It looks like Jerry Lee Lewis. You know. Anyway, so no, you know. stop no. it. No, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Would you, no. you got to watch out for your piano teacher? <laughs> so I. Uh... I based the, you know, I do it. I do that song in a kind of high voice, mm-hmm. and I, I, I base my performance off uh, the Prince song "Kiss." I kind of listen to what he did. Oh. It's sort of oh, that sort of yeah. influenced that. So mm-hmm. that's uh, interesting. Music yeah. reference. How, what mm-hmm. do you think about Prince as a guitar player? Oh God, I, I'm a huge Prince fan. So I would never mm-hmm. know, but any, he is. anything. Yeah. I think he's he's great. I, I, mm-hmm. He's an incredible guitarist, singer, writer, mm-hmm. you name it. He, he was the tops in my in my book. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I think he, you know, uh, I think a lot of people only looked at him as pop. You know what I mean? There was a no, pop culture in the 80s. On. But before that, too, he did jazz like nobody's business. Like, he yeah, really, he did everything was great. Oh, my mm-hmm. God. I, I didn't know that you were into mm-hmm. him, too, like that. Like, he really, Oh, I, I, I've loved him for years. You know, that, that album, uh, early one, the Dirty Minds one. Oh. Uh, you know, so again, that that's got the whole sparse thing. Is like oh, only two or three instruments on it, and everything. You mm-hmm. know, there's lots of air and space on that one. I, and it, 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 I, I, that's one of my favorite records of any mm-hmm. time. I think one of the times that people got him as a guitarist, like I mean, the Purple Rain, obviously, and everything too. But like the general population is when he did the when while my guitar gently uh, leaps. Yeah when oh, he did yeah, that yeah. and then he brought in George Harrison's son I, I just love how was... he looked at his son and like let the kid like this is for you and you can stand forward too it was yeah, like yeah. this connection of like bringing That's the sweet. youth out towards the towards the platform you know what i mean he was just so sweet oh yeah, yeah. he really 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 was you know mm. but that's a that's a thing it's like when we talk about blues like i said it's in all kinds of places that you don't think um it's- everywhere in every corner of the world there's a reason to sing the blues i still want to go back to i killed the king of the blues i want to go back to this song Mm -hmm. because it's important so there's the whole thing about the you know like crossroads right cooter's album and that movie uh crossroads right so here you know here's the big duel off at the end and it's the devil and Robert Johnson, a whole devil in the blues, like this whole thing. So apparently this is kind of part of that. Right. But like, come on. Well, the, the story of Robert Johnson is there's, there's many, there's a few different theories of how he right. died, but one of the most prominent mm-hmm. ones is that he was poisoned by a, a, a jealous husband in a bar. Oh. And, uh, and so I was re I was reading a book about Robert Johnson and, um, <sighs> And I suddenly had this whole idea of uh, of the uh, writing the song from the husband's point of view, and sort of turning him into the, like a, a wandering mm-hmm. Jew kind of character, who who's haunted forever by by his killing Robert Johnson. So oh. that's uh, that's where that came from. With the Robert wow. Johnson, did you see the Netflix thing? There was like a 
little documentary about him and doing that. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty good. And yeah. I don't know if you've seen, but uh, they, they used to only have two pictures of him, and they recently found a third one that they're pretty sure is him. Oh, wow. Uh, if you go online, wow. you can probably type, like, third Robert Johnson picture, and uh, it's kind of exciting. We're, we've got this yeah. book, um, and... Ah, oh, please. I'm so mad. That I'm mad I don't have the guy's name. It's Chesper is the last name. I'm going to say Steve Chesper. He's a blues okay. musician, too. And he wrote the definitive guide of the Mississippi blues artists. And you can take this book and go to every grave site, every, every. Oh, nice. Thing. And, mm-hmm. you know, we travel full time and we're in one car, you know, but this is one of those yeah. books that I will not, like, give away. It's in in the car. And I want to go and do this. I have this feel. I want to do like the blues artist. So I'm just going to say, like, when we get out there, I'm going to call you. Okay. <laughs> I think you, I think you, call you from the grave I think, no, I think you should fly in and like, or drive in and come out and meet us in like, you know, blues territory and be part that of this. That sounds like, like such a good adventure. I can't believe it. I think, I think no. you should do it. And I think, I think I've got a few other people I want to call in too, that we have like a, like a, that's just graveyard. Like a, yeah, it's a, not graveyard a graveyard blues graveyard. session. Yeah. yeah. Like, well, just, what a better place. I know, walked, but there's, I mean, Mississippi is not that big of a state. But and we could do walked, it pretty. Yeah. We've walked a lot of graveyards. And we've seen famous people's a lot of snakes. Like, graves. No, it's interesting because you you walk from gravestone to gravestone, and there'll be a famous person, especially if they're like from the 1700s or 1800s, with the smallest thing. And then you'll come to a big mausoleum of somebody who died more recently, and they haven't done anything other than. Oh, why I'm so good to get in trouble. No, I have money. Oh, no, they got it but you know what I mean? You don't. Yeah. You, you, it's like chalk and cheese. You're like, oh, here's this famous person next to you. Somebody that even reading what they were about doesn't. Oh, you can't. You can't. You can't get into that, man. I know. You're, you're going to get emails. Get we're going to get emails. Gonna get in trouble. But no, but it's interesting, you know. And graveyards, I mean, yeah, a blues session in a graveyard. Whoa. Dude, seriously. Dude. So when we get to Mississippi, I'm going to call you. Seriously. We'll, we'll organize it beforehand, obviously. But, like but what we, about oh, on Halloween? Oh, and then, oh, wait, then we'll have to play before I take my rest. And then we'll have to do it mm-hmm. before we get to the graveyard. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Should be on Halloween, though. Yeah. Should yeah. be on Halloween. So what are you working on now? Because I know you are. I mean, are you, are you taking a break? Like, seriously? Well, I, you know, the weird thing about being uh, such an indie like I am, you kind of have to keep keep things churning all the time, you know. I mean, mm-hmm. If you, you know, I, I, I know I'm relatively prolific compared to some people, but uh, I usually have something churning. And, and it's funny you mentioned, because just literally yesterday, I was uh, putting together a list of uh, of what I think the next album might be. And, mm-hmm. and and it's in line with re redoing songs. There's a bunch of songs like on my Backwoods Glance album and oh, several that. others that that the that the, my blues audience has never heard. And so I'm thinking oh. of doing an album where I just kind of re revisit, revisit and rearrange oh. and do these for a blues audience. So that's that's in the works right now. Oh, there's some. It- I love Backwoods Glance. That's one of my favorite mm-hmm. albums. It's one. It's seriously, mm-hmm. um, really that and Pledge Drive, those two, and eventually now I'll just keep going on to all. Of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. yeah because I'm go. thinking over the songs on the album. Like I listen to my and hams and ham and eggs. We play that a lot on food shows, but mm-hmm. um, now things have changed up a little bit. Now we get to play on song lists and everything. But um, I, I, you've got some songs that really just dig into the heart the heartbeat of the country of um people working hard and love and loss and um blue collar life and be below blue collar life what it's like and i really appreciate that because i think you're documenting history in a very cool way for people to get that you know to get it 
And and even, you know, this album, you wrote it during COVID. Did you think about it? Like, oh, this is COVID, you know, you know, you've got a lot of death stuff in here. <laughs> well, the the, fi- the final song is definitely, that one is definitely a COVID song. It's mm-hmm. interesting, too. I have a, a Facebook friend from Tunisia uh, mm. named uh, Hauda Oesli. I probably met, mispronouncing it. And uh, she has a, her, her artistic name is Rosa Rosita. Anyway, we've been corresponding for several years back and forth, and um, her father died this last year, although not yeah. in COVID. And so in one of our correspondences, uh, it's interesting, she speaks five languages, so her English is pretty good, but sometimes a little weird. But mm-hmm. uh, she she said, um, death doesn't ask permission. And yeah. I was like, Okay. <laughs> That's song. perfect. That's a song <laughs> right there. Yeah. I was like, and and literally, mm. as they sometimes do, I read that and 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 the whole song mm. just wrote itself in my yeah. brain. You know? mm-hmm. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah. What what insight would you give to someone starting out in the music world now? I mean, you've been in the in this world for a long time with music and performing, even in the videos on YouTube. You see you performing you know is a younger guy out there and mm-hmm. it's like hippie man <laughs> you know <laughs> but you know hey you know but think about it you know all the the music that you've seen of your life and uh, all the changes and a lot of times you know you want to go exact oh this is the coolest thing to do uh, what would you say to someone starting out who really just loves music writes good stuff and should they veer towards What's cool now, or veer for what's in their heart? What What would you? Give oh, us what, what's in their heart? I mm-hmm. mean, for me, it's only what's in their heart. You know, I've never, mm-hmm. I've never tried to write to a time or a, a style or anything. You know, it's a, it's a, uh, I, I used to do much more rock oriented music, but it still sounded like my stuff. You know, it, it's, you know, I'm just not the kind of writer, or and I don't. I don't like corporate kind of music at all. You know, I don't like uh, stuff that isn't straight from the heart. So definitely from the heart. I would also say you better just really love it. You know, if, if you're in it just to, to make money, then that's probably not the right, the right that business for you. You know, I mean, I, I've done it a long time. I have not really made any money, but I've gotten well known, you know, so it's mm-hmm. kind of cool. Yeah. It, you it's- know, it's, the artistic world is incredibly difficult, but it's a huge part of history, and it tells the truth about history more than um, politicians. To say, yeah, it. well, that's for sure. <laughs> Do you ah, think? Don't start! Don't start! But yeah, it does. Politicians, Sorry, politicians <laughs> can't even get today right. <laughs> I know. Don't start! Don't it's even like, start on it. Don't. We'll, okay. we'll have a whole other hour. Like no, I mean we could. I mean we could go on for beyond an hour on that. Oh I, yeah, I, oh yeah. I think music is our salvation, but it tells the truth. It tells the yeah. feeling of what's going on. It is like a documentarian of of what's going on in the world and how everyone's feeling and what they need to feel and how they also need that release. And this album, I think it has that. I think this is just this is cool, dude. I mean, it, oh, I, I, we love all your music and it's all exciting. Yeah. And I think he's got a new album and it took us so long to get you on the show because we all <laughs> do stuff with computers. <laughs> and so I really do. I, I want death by update. <laughs> it's a song, please. I, I beg of you to write that, but uh, we're going to close with detour blues because like Nancy, she started listening that. to the album and she's just like detour blues. Yeah. She just starts yelling out detour blues. And I'm like, okay, Good. whatever mama mm-hmm. wants. And it is, mm-hmm. it's cool. And it really goes with, uh, I think, our life too. Yeah, Traveling sums it up. Stu- I mean, we, <laughs> I mean, when you want to travel full time and COVID hits, our life was nothing but a series I of I can't details. imagine. No, I, I thought um, about you too. I thought, oh my God, what no, are you doing? It's- it's dude, the detour. Dude, do you blues, know how many man. times we'd end up at a rest area next to truckers oh looking gosh. at each other? Now what? And yeah, what yeah. are we? And now what? Because things were, were closing down as we were traveling. We're being careful. We're, we're vaccinated. We mask. We do all that stuff. But at that point, it was like, now what? And um, I would sit down in a under a gazebo with my computer and my phone. Mm-hmm. And Nancy would bring sandwiches out of the back mm-hmm. of the car 
and sometimes wine. Don't tell anybody that <laughs> because she could see it was getting to that point. She's like, I think you need some wine. This is where your mother is really the best <laughs> mother on the planet. Some people give you cookies. My mother brings me wine. And sandwiches. There you go. <laughs> and we got through, but Detour Blues is, you That's know what? Red De- song. It's, that is where I can't wait to hear it. We're going to, and this is just, you, you, it allows you to move forward and detours actually are a breath of fresh air. <laughs> they actually say that. sometimes save your butt. Yeah. yeah. And I think your detour blues encapsulate that part, that feeling of. It's not bad. You know, I'm, so, I'm so glad to hear it. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's one of the songs I was the least sure of but people seem oh. to be taking to it yeah oh no it's cool you leave it where right. it is you don't you touch it don't you, <laughs> touch it. <laughs> don't you touch it you leave it where it is it's good don't oh, you touch no. it it's on the album now, well, so you can't touch I, it. I like i like the um the instrument t- the instrumental on that too with the double mm-hmm. guitar and a mm-hmm. harmonica that was one of my favorite mm-hmm. parts. oh speaking yeah. of this so you got Who's on the album with you? Give everybody a shout out, please. Oh, yeah, I could get a shout out. Uh, Peter Grinnell and Julie Moskovitz, uh, who mm-hmm. are the regular bass and drummer for my performing band. And mm-hmm. then they're on drum and uh, bass. Julie's on drum and Peter's on bass. And then I play guitar and harmonica and sing. Oh, uh, cool. now, like, it, that, that's just. COVID be gone, right? We're back to 100% normal. I know people are out playing again a little bit and it's going in and out. Like one thing's open and then all of a sudden it's closed. It's, it's kind of up and down right now across yeah. the country and around the world. But now take this album. You're going to, where would you perform it in San Francisco with the band that you have and anybody would want to bring on stage with you? Like, who would you bring and where? Oh, who would I bring? Oh, yeah, wow. keep the band. I mean, you've got an awesome band. I, I would bring in? Jeff. Be- I would bring Jeff Beck into <gasps> any band I yes. was ever in. <laughs> yeah, he's like, Jeff Beck is now, if I had my Yeah, if I could play with any musician in the world, it would probably be Jeff Hell Beck. Hell yes, I'm with you. Mm. Mm. Oh my God, yes. And did you ever see him with Tal Wickenfeld? Like, just like how he helped her? Like, just oh, as yeah, a yeah. Okay, I know. I'm sorry, but I really love Jeff Beck, too. Oh, okay, yeah. so mm-hmm. where? Where are you going to play? Oh, well, we just play different clubs around here. You know, you, I, I can't think of a specific... Oh, you want to do clubs. Here. So more huh? than like, you would do more of like a club thing. Oh, oh than you're an talking fan- fantasy thing here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh okay. Well, be, you know. I, I would want to do it then at the ballpark. You know, let's get the ballpark with Jeff Beck and Blind Lemon Pledge. I think that would work good. <laughs> you know what would be cool? If you huh. could stop the traffic on all those bridges and those places where you have to cross over the water, all those different bridges, there's bridges yeah, on stop top your of bridges. you. you <laughs> just stop them all and perform there, and everybody stopped. There and you go. Stop the Golden Gate cool. Bridge like he's in the yeah, middle just, of it. Yeah, and they exactly. can put big screens up so everyone can see it, and yeah. everything's playing on their and they phones just sit and computers. Their cars, like, not their computer, but then, in their car, yeah. Yeah, and watch, and then uh, waitresses and roller. Oh, can you say wait? Pe- I don't know what no, you say anymore. Servers, people, sir, whatever servers on roller skates would bring you drinks. Be fun, <laughs> <laughs> and a burger. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm liking this fantasy. I Let's know this going. is a cool <laughs> fantasy. I'm just thinking it's fun. <laughs> Beats blues at the graveyard. I, think. Yeah, I don't know, but I like blues at the graveyard too. I still want someone to come in on roller skates to bring me I know. food while you're in the graveyard. Why not? Yeah, <laughs> this is on. classic, classic. No, listen, I'm still I'm calling you when we get to Mississippi and do this. We want okay. to spend time and like I would I, I was gonna say I want to dig up around the graves. That sounds so terrible. No, yeah, I really. want to go like get into the history of you know the, just I think so many people are forgotten in the blues, the world of the blues. And oh yeah, yeah. I just, I don't, I don't want them to be forgotten. And I want us to do something about it with what we do in our travels and our magazines and everything. And I want all my friends in the blues to be part of this because you guys know more than we do. And um, I just feel like we could do something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I feel like even an album or something, I don't know just be cool. putting it out there in the world but hmm. james as always thank you for joining us everyone keep up with james it's blindlemon-pledge.com pledge yourself 
pledge yourself to the blind lemon. <laughs> go get it. And uh, go to bigblendradio.com to keep up with our shows. We are Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Pacific time, 7 p.m. Eastern time. And we're going to close with Nancy's favorite, Detour Blues. Mm. Thanks so much, James. Thanks, James. All righty. Take care. Detour Blues is driving me Got the blues far as I can see The Detour Blues, Lord, is driving me More than a nickel, more than a dime Takes much more for this squeeze of mine More than a nickel, much more than a dime A motivated love highway Heading for the detour blues I'm heading for the detour blues Detour blues, I'm running low Running around where I've been before, yeah Detour blues, Lord, I'm running low Wasting my time Waiting for this fickle friend of mine Spinning my wheels Lord, I'm wasting my time I've lost my direction Don't know which lane to choose A motivating love highway Heading for the detour blue for the detour blues Blues. Ooh, I'm heading for the detour blues.